Dr. Barry Marshall is one of the most famous doctors in history, but he wasn't always. In 1982, Dr. Barry Marshall believed he had discovered the cause of stomach ulcers. But the medical world laughed at him, ridiculed his findings and dismissed him as an extremist fool. But Barry wasn't willing to back down, so with grim determination he did the unthinkable. He drank a petri dish of deadly bacteria. But why would he do something so extreme? Well, to understand that, we need to go back to the beginning. Chapter 1. Humble Beginnings As Barry would go on to live a unique life, it is only fitting that he began in a place with an equally unique name, Kalgoorlie, a small city in Western Australia. He was born on September the 30th, 1951. Both his mother and father worked tirelessly to give Barry and his four brothers a good life, but it wasn't easy. Their house often had tin roofs and dirt floors. Despite these humble beginnings, Barry always had something that kept him going. You see, from an early age, he was constantly exposed to stories of medicine from his mother. As a nurse, she would come home each day and share what she'd seen. The good, the bad, and of course, the ugly. While Barry's three younger brothers would squirm at their stories, he only grew more fascinated by the world of medicine. After graduating from high school, this passion led Barry to the University of Western Australia School of Medicine. With his mother's support and his own hard work, Barry graduated in 1974 with a Bachelor of Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery. At just 23 years old, Barry had the world at his fingertips. Many described him as a smart, promising young man with a bright future, but few at the time realized just how bright his future would be. Chapter 2 A Chance Meeting Following his graduation, Barry went on to live a typical suburban life. He got married, had kids, and focused on his studies and career. This dedication and hard work led him to a position at the Royal Perth Hospital, where he was eventually appointed as the head registrar of medicine. An impressive achievement for someone so young. This was a significant turning point in Barry's career, but it paled in comparison to an even greater moment. Meeting Dr. Robin Warren in 1981. Dr. Warren, a pathologist at the hospital, was incredibly passionate about gastritis, a condition described as the inflammation of the stomach lining, which left untreated can lead to more severe complications like bleeding, stomach ulcers and cancer. At the time, doctors weren't sure what caused gastritis, but there were two key factors that shaped their understanding. First, they commonly found ulcers in men who led stressful lives and smoked heavily. Second, they observed an increase in stomach problems like gastritis when rats were placed in stressful environments, such as being submerged in cold water while wearing straight jackets. The same doctors also discovered that administering anti-acid could reduce the ulcers. When you're stressed, your stomach produces more acid. Antiacids help reduce the excess acid, so doctors naturally assumed that stress was the main cause of gastritis and more severe conditions like stomach ulcers and cancer. Because of this presumption, doctors at the time believed that gastritis was the result of stress and so when tests couldn't identify a clear issue, patients were sent home with a prescription for antidepressants. However, despite this treatment, many patients' conditions worsened from simple gastritis to more serious problems like ulcers or tumors. In these cases, doctors would send patients to Dr. Warren to make sure they didn't have cancer. It was during these tests that Dr. Warren began to notice something strange, which was the presence of bacteria called Helicobacter pylori on the inner lining of the stomach. This discovery led to a theory that would eventually change the foundation of medicine. However, Dr. Warren knew he couldn't pursue this theory on his own. He needed help. In 1981, Dr. Warren was introduced to Barry. At the time, Barry was in his fellowship training, which is the stage of training a doctor goes through when specializing in a specific field of medicine. 
Barry was asked to assist Dr. Warren with this project, and for the rest of 1981 and well into 1982, the two worked together, analyzing the presence of Helicobacter pylori in the gut. Eventually, the two hypothesized that the true cause of gastritis wasn't stress. They believed stress wasn't even a factor. Instead, they proposed that the presence of Helicobacter pylori was the real cause of gastritis and stomach ulcers. However, when they tried to share their hypothesis with other doctors, they were often met with ridicule and labeled as extremists. In the minds of most doctors, it simply wasn't feasible that bacteria could be responsible for stomach ulcers, as they believed that bacteria couldn't thrive in the stomach due to its highly acidic environment. Fortunately, toward the end of 1982, the two men were granted funding to test their hypothesis. They breathed a sigh of relief, feeling that their struggle was finally over. Little did they know, this was just the beginning. Chapter 3 – Desperate Times to properly test their hypothesis, Dr. Warren and Barry began using throat swabs from patients with stomach ulcers to collect samples. They then sent these samples to the lab, where technicians would place them on a petri dish, a special type of dish that helps bacteria grow faster. The test was simple. If the bacteria grew, it meant an infection was present. If there was no growth, then the ulcer wasn't caused by the bacteria. Dr. Warren and Barry were confident that they would immediately see bacterial growth, but they didn't. In fact, for the first 30 patients, there was no sign of growth at all. The two men were dumbfounded. Had they missed something? Were they wrong all along? Were the doctors who had ridiculed them right? They spent days contemplating these questions, trying to figure out what had gone wrong. Eventually, they decided to visit the technicians to see how the samples were being handled. After some questioning, the two men discovered that the technicians were discarding the swabs after only two days. A common practice for throat swabs when no bacteria growth is observed. But the bacteria they were testing Helicobacter pylori was slow growing. Fortunately, the 31st sample had not been discarded due to the heavy workload of the technicians. Instead of sitting for two days, it had been left from Thursday to Monday, a total of five days. When Dr. Warren and Barry checked the sample, they found exactly what they had been expecting, clear Helicobacter pylori growth. After many more tests and a year of analysis, the two submitted their findings to the Gastroenterological Society of Australia. To their shock, it was turned down. Dr. Warren was stunned. He couldn't believe the inconsistency of the doctors around him. It was at this point he considered giving up. But Barry wasn't ready to quit. He developed a plan, so bold and so foolproof that if it worked. It would make every doctor in the country, if not the world, stop and listen to them. His plan was simple. He would intentionally and voluntarily consume a petri dish filled with Helicobacter pylori bacteria. Chapter 4 – Desperate Measures You'd think Barry would have spoken to his wife before doing something so insane, but he didn't. Instead, he simply asked Dr. Warren to perform an endoscopy, a procedure where a flexible tube is inserted down a patient's throat to check for bacteria in the stomach. During the process, Dr. Warren paused and asked why Barry wanted this done. With a tube halfway down his throat and gritting his teeth, Barry simply replied, Just take the biopsy. A few minutes later, Dr. Warren confirmed that there was no presence of Helicobacter pylori bacteria in his stomach. The two documented their findings and then Barry did the unthinkable. He picked up the petri dish of meaty broth, swirled it around and chugged it down as if he were a student drinking beer with his friends. Immediately, Barry's stomach began to gurgle, but for the most part, he felt fine. He assumed it would take at least one to two years for an infection to develop into an ulcer. He was wrong. After
After just five days, he started waking up every night, violently vomiting. His condition worsened, and by day 10, he decided to undergo another endoscopy. What he and Dr. Varen found was both surprising and expected. His stomach was overrun by millions of inflamed cells caused by Helicobacter pylori bacteria. The two exchanged a stunned look, realizing what they had just proved. Gastritis wasn't primarily caused by stress. It was instead primarily caused by bacteria, and it could infect healthy people as well. It was now that Barry decided to tell his wife. Naturally, she was outraged that he had done something so reckless without consulting her. She wasn't just worried about him, she feared that her children would also be at risk. However, after Barry explained everything, she eventually calmed down and asked what the next step was. On day 14, Barry underwent another endoscopy and began a course of antibiotics to fight the infection. Now all he could do was sit and wait to see if he had just made a monumental mistake or if he was on the verge of making history. Chapter 5 The Aftermath The gastritis eventually went away, providing Barry and Dr. Warren with definite proof that gastritis was primarily caused by bacteria, not stress. The two had also proven that this condition, which had taken the lives of millions around the world, could be fixed with a simple cure, antibiotics. In response, the two men published a report on their findings in 1985. You would think that the medical community would have taken notice immediately, or perhaps the next year, or the year after that, but they didn't. In fact, the report sat collecting dust for a whole decade. During this time, Barry began diagnosing and treating patients with gastritis in secret. He knew the real cure and he wasn't about to let his patients suffer or die because of the ignorance of the medical community. Fortunately, in 1995, news of Barry's work began to spread. Doctors around the world started referring to him as the guinea pig doctor. Eager to get the word out, Barry capitalized on this new wave of interest, pushing the consequence of untreated gastritis into the public eye. He explained that people were dying and that immediate action was necessary. As a result, the FDA fast-tracked research into gastritis and over the next few years, more and more studies were conducted, confirming that gastritis was caused by Helicobacter pylori bacteria. As the evidence mounted, confirming the link between gastritis and bacteria, Barry began to be hailed as a hero, so much so that in 1999 he was selected as a Fellow of the Royal Society. Barry and Dr. Warren would later go on to win a Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Over time, the two would receive countless awards for their groundbreaking work. Barry went on to found several companies focused on preventing and treating gut-related conditions, such as gastritis and irritable bowel syndrome. Thanks to the work of Barry and Dr. Warren, stomach cancer rates around the world have dropped significantly, and as a result, so have deaths. How many lives did Barry and Warren save? We can't say for sure, but one thing is certain. The two men absolutely changed the trajectory of medicine for the better. However, the progress of medicine isn't only due to the courage of good men. In fact, a great deal of the understanding we have today came from the minds of bad men, primarily grave robbers. To learn more, click the thumbnail on the screen now.